I've received many times on this channel questions about HDMI 2.1, what it is, what it supports, and you guys have definitely asked me to cover some details about HDMI 2.1. So that's what I plan to do today with you, so stick around just a little bit longer. I've got about eight or so topics about HDMI 2.1 that make it a benefit over HDMI 2.0. And just a hint for you guys watching, it's not all about frames per second. So talking about the main difference between HDMI 2.0 and 2.1, what you're gonna see mainly is the data transfer capability between the two as far as a difference. So HDMI 2.0 has an 18 gigabits per second transfer rate of data, whereas HDMI 2.1 has 48 gigabits per second transfer rate for data. What does that give you though? So previously with HDMI 2.0, we could support 4K at 60 frames per second and 8K at 30 frames per second, uh, but really transmitting 10K data was almost impossible with HDMI 2.0. So that's kind of where HDMI 2.1 comes in. We can now transport 10K resolution to your panel at 30 frames per second, just like previously with HDMI 2.0, it was 8K at 30 frames per second. Obviously, one of the most important pieces to this is not the 8K or the 10K just yet, even though there are 8K TVs available, it's 4K at 120 hertz capabilities, the higher frame rates, uh, at 4K resolutions for console gamers. If you're a movie buff, if you're looking to create a home theater, this HDMI 2.1 is fairly important if you're looking at an 8K TV. And that brings up eARC. If you don't know what eARC is or ARC is, essentially it stands for Audio Return Channel. HDMI 2.0 was unable to send certain signals and HDMI 2.1 specifically takes advantage of the connection and the bandwidth between those two devices to be able to deliver the best audio profile of today's standard at the time of making this video. So what can you do with eARC? and sound. Previously, ARC would be sending somewhat of a compressed signal in order to receive a 7.1, 7 channel 1 subwoofer uh, sound profile to your receiver or your sound part. But with HDMI 2.1 eARC, it is sending an uncompressed 5.1, 7.1 signal to either your receiver or it's going to be sending it to your soundbar. So if you're looking at something like the Sonos Arc, then uh, you're going to want uncompressed 7.1. And if you're definitely one of those people who has an audio video receiver, you're going to want to be using HDMI 2.1 Arc. Something that us PC gamers have been familiar with for a very long time that console gamers have not is variable refresh rate. Uh, we're all familiar with it, and with HDMI 2.1, it takes advantage of that. In fact, uh, NVIDIA has specific capability through their HDMI 2.1, uh, and they've kind of partnered with LG in order to certify some of their TV panels to be G-Sync compatible, a form of variable refresh rate, uh, in order to get the most out of your HDMI 2.1. Now, for those of you who haven't used variable refresh rate in the past, uh, essentially HDMI 2.1 doesn't introduce it, so to speak. HDMI 2.0 can utilize variable refresh rate. However, uh, because of some of the other features built in, you're able to get faster representation of the actual frames that whatever your GPU or console is producing, it's happening right away. So when you're playing a particular video game and your static refresh rate is 120 hertz, 120 frames per second, but your GPU or your console can't really keep up uh, with that demand, it's gonna dip down to say 110, 100, maybe even like 90, right? Uh, well, the challenge that that presents is your GPU is only sending that many frames. So either it has to skip frames, uh, it, it causes artifacting, judder, screen tearing, issues like that. So what VRR uh, does to your display 
is it allows it to adjust its refresh rate based on the frames that it's receiving. HDMI 2.1 introduces some things to help with that, uh, not just a higher bandwidth, but auto low latency mode, uh, which is a great way for you to feel that response in time rather than having somewhat of a delay, right? Let's talk about that. There's a couple technologies within this variable refresh rate that help it operate better on HDMI 2.1. Auto low latency mode, what is it? Well, essentially, you know, a TV isn't meant to perform like a gaming TV all the time. There's really no reason to have an auto low latency mode when you're just watching movies. So when you are playing something like a console where you get to control the remote uh, and it it's highly dependent on how quick your reaction is uh, or how quick your movement and perception of that movement need to be, something like auto low latency mode needs to be implemented. Auto low latency takes the signal being sent from a console, a device, uh, to the TV and displays it as fast as it possibly can. Now, in some cases, that's not extremely fast. It's highly dependent on the TV that you actually have. Uh, but the beautiful part is with HDMI 2.1, uh, it's able to be faster. Now, a couple other things just randomly where auto low latency could actually benefit you is for like video conferencing. You know, you're presenting something, you're clicking on a particular article or a PowerPoint. It's not gonna take a couple seconds for that thing to pop up for everyone to see. It's gonna match up quickly. It's gonna see that the command that you gave uh, happened right away uh, and your voice matches up to it. And that's, that could be a big thing too as well. Speaking of voice, if you're avid into karaoke, apparently that is a big area where it can help as well. They call it auto. It's supposed to update automatically when you plug that HDMI in. But just in case, if you have a TV that you know supports it, make sure you go into your settings menu and make sure that that game mode or auto low latency is actually turned on. The last piece of technology that really gives a benefit with HDMI 2.1 over 2.0 with variable refresh rate is quick frame transport. What is quick frame transport? How does it benefit you? Essentially, when your GPU, your console, whatever is doing and driving the graphics, uh, creates that frame uh, and sends it over to your display, there can be a bit of a delay from that original signal being ready to when it is received by the actual display. Now, the problem with that is if you're gaming on a controller, or a mouse and keyboard that is connected to the main computer, main console, you haven't made your move yet because uh, that frame hasn't presented itself to you on the display. So with quick frame transport and HDMI 2.1, taking advantage of that higher bandwidth, it's able to send that signal much faster, much quicker. There's been a few videos out there with uh, you know, high speed cameras capturing just how bad this can be. The, the actual frame coming from the GPU to your monitor or even TV it can be a frame or two behind. And after you've made your shot, you've made your move, you've missed already before you've even seen it. Things like this quick frame transport, variable refresh rate, things like that have, have been implemented into PCs for a very long time. Uh, but, you know, and something I wanna talk about is we have newer gen graphics cards that have come out with HDMI 2.1. So why would they do that? Why add HDMI 2.1 to a graphics card when you're already getting those benefits from DisplayPort? So that's a fairly long debate to have. What's the difference between DisplayPort and HDMI? It's been going on for many years and I'm not here to really discuss that. I am here to say that HDMI does carry a few things that you know DisplayPort just doesn't, even though DisplayPort can send an audio signal, it may not support some of the most current sound formats such as Dolby Atmos. So why would uh, HDMI 2.1 be on the RTX cards? Well, it's somewhat unclear, uh, but there are some new features that Nvidia talks about being capable of with the HDMI 2.1. So one of them is fixed rate link. What does that mean? 
So fixed rate link is essentially keeping a link between your GPU and the actual monitor or TV that you're displaying in order to receive the best possible signal. It's gonna keep that bandwidth open. So no matter what amount is going through that bandwidth, it's going to be steady. It gives you the most uncompressed uh, raw video that you can get to your display. Let your display do the work, right? Let it show the beauty that it holds with fixed rate length. One of the other benefits that the 30 series NVIDIA graphics card has is display stream compression, DSC 1.2A, and that is specifically through HDMI 2.1. So what does that mean? Well, you've probably heard the term of chromo sub sampling in the different formats that have been available to us in past generations. Well, I've also heard that gameplay doesn't really make a difference, but I would beg to differ because there have been known issues with chromo sub sampling such as 4.2.0 and some artifacting that we've seen. So DSC essentially builds on 4.2.0, 4.2.2 uh, chromo sub sampling and allows for a better color depth, more capability uh, with the compression that it does. It uses an algorithm uh, to make sure that compression isn't gonna be artifacting, causing issues that weren't intended by the original creator. So that is definitely a huge benefit because it allows for, for more calibration of games and, and content such as movies to play through that HDMI 2.1 that honestly DisplayPort just won't have. So when you're talking about compatibility with monitors and TVs, HDMI 2.1 plug, plugged into your uh, RTX 30 series could give you more capability to do higher resolutions while still maintaining a 10-bit color depth. Which brings me to the last point, and, and that is HDMI 2.1 introduces dynamic HDR. What the heck is dynamic? What's static? And what is, what is all this? So HDR, in my opinion, is probably one of the biggest revolutions we've had uh, in media in general over the last few years. I did a great video on this talking about TVs and monitors and HDR. If you want to check that out, I'll link it below. I won't go over what all of it means, but essentially a 10-bit color depth uh, is phenomenal. Uh, we have these new displays that are HDR capable with 10-bit color depth, and we're not actually taking full advantage of them if we're not using content uh, that is actually filmed or created with that in mind. So what does dynamic HDR do? Well, rather than sending a packet of information at the beginning of the video or at the beginning of your game launch saying, hey, here's where HDR takes place, put it into the map, and when you pass by that particular part of the map or when you watch that specific part of the video, uh, it's going to display an HDR. Well, dynamic HDR takes it a step further. It's somewhat like ray tracing if you've seen it. It essentially allows frame by frame uh, for your GPU, your streaming media player, your you know, Blu-ray player, wherever you're getting your content, it's going to allow frame by frame your TV to adjust, somewhat like variable refresh rate, to the HDR and the color capability, the brightness capability of the display that you have. Now, dynamic HDR is not necessarily new to HDMI 2.1, but with the higher bandwidth, knowing what we know, something like dynamic HDR will definitely enhance that experience through those technologies. That's why they all work together. Every little bit of technology that I just went through works together to create HDMI 2.1 and all the benefits that can be had through making all of your components and future capabilities HDMI 2.1 compatible. For now, you guys, I appreciate you watching. I hope you learned something from this video. I appreciate everyone who supports the channel, and I'll catch you guys in the next video.